Hi there, in today's video we're going to talk about the airspeed indicator. By the end of this video you will know what the airspeed indicator is, how does the airspeed indicator works, and what can go wrong with the airspeed indicator. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriel from PilotClan.com. I'm a training captain on the Boeing 737 and if you are trying to become a better pilot or make your head around the aviation, this is the right channel for you. Consider subscribe so you will not miss the next video. Ok, before starting the today's video, please leave in the comments below any questions you may have throughout this, uh, this episode, because for me it's extremely important that you get 100% of the content that I'm about to deliver to you. Alright, let's start. What is the airspeed indicator? The airspeed indicator is the instrument that you've got on board that actually tells you at which speed you're flying. Normally, 99% of the time, the airspeed indicator gives you the speed okay, that you're flying at in knots. Okay, but some airspeed indicator, especially for the smaller aircraft, you can find them with the speed expressed in kilometers per hour or miles per hour, okay? But normally in aviation we talk about knots, okay? You might have the airspeed indicator in a different way in bo on board the planes, okay? We've got some airspeed indicators are the, let's say, the old style airspeed indicators that are the analog uh, instrumentations where basically you've got like a clock and you've got a pointer that actually goes up and down depending if you're increasing or decreasing the speed. And then now in the most modern airplanes you've got the glass cockpit, okay? And then you have this uh, airspeed tape. Basically, you have the indication of the speed, and then the airspeed that goes up and down depending if you're increasing or decreasing the speed. Okay, I've been flying the Boeing 737 for the last 10 years. Okay, and the, before that, I was working as a skydiver pilot on a Cessna 206 that had the old style airspeed indicator. So, as I've seen throughout my career, both indicator. I can tell you that practically what is the main advantage of having a speed tape, okay, airspeed tape on the glass cockpit, okay, is that you can fly at very precise speed compared to the analog instrumentation. Because on the analog instrumentation, you've got just a pointer that goes up and down, so you cannot really fly the, the knots, for example. You don't know You've got a, like an indication, like a clock, okay? You, in a clock you can call if it's like five past the hour, but you cannot call if it's six past the hour because it may be seven or maybe, maybe it's five, okay? However, on the airspeed tape, on the glass cockpit planes, okay, it's a lot easier because you've got exact, the exact number, okay? So you can really fly very accurately on the airspeed tape on the, on the glass cockpit, okay? But how does the airspeed indicator actually work? In order to understand this, we're going to go into the whiteboard and I draw a very simple airspeed indicator in order to make sure that you get the concept. Okay, okay. looking at the whiteboard here, what does the pilot see on the fly deck is this one. Okay, so this part in here, okay, so where you can actually read your speed, okay. Then behind this uh, airspeed indicator, you've got the chamber, okay. The chamber is all this part in here, okay. This is the chamber all this as well, okay? And then you've got, uh, very importantly, the diaphragm, okay, which is this one, okay? These two parts, okay, in this case, the chamber and the diaphragm are connected, the chamber to the static port and the diaphragm to the pitot tube, okay? If you don't know what the pitot tube is, I'm gonna tell you very quickly. The pitot tube actually gives you the dynamic pressure. What I mean by that is that the pitot tube has a small hole in front and the airflow that is coming, the undisturbed airflow that is coming, the relative, let's say you're moving forward, so you have a relative airflow that is actually coming over you, it will go into the pitot tube and you will know what's the pressure and what's the speed and everything of the airflow that goes into the pitot tube. The static port, however, these ones, okay, the static ports, actually tells you they take the static pressure, okay, because they are mounted on the side of the fuselage, so they only feel the pressure that is around the plane, okay, they don't feel the dynamic pressure, because the pitot tube is mounted, if I have to write down here an airplane, okay, what happens is that the pitot tube, let's imagine the pitot tube is mounted here, so the airflow goes straight into the pitot tube, so you know the dynamic pressure, and the static port that takes the static pressure are mounted on the side of the fuselage. So they don't take the dynamic, but they take the static pressure, okay, because they don't feel the actual airflow that is going over them, okay. So this is a very quick explanation of the pitot, and static, uh, pitot tube and static port, okay. So now, 
As you can see in the picture here, we've got the chamber is connected to the static port and the diaphragm is connected to the pitot tube. This is a very important thing to understand. Why is this one? Because the airspeed indicator, as you can see, is actually connected to the diaphragm, as you can see in here, okay? So what will happen is that if the diaphragm will expand or will contract, will make the pointer to move, okay? Normally, when the diaphragm expands, the pointer will increase, the uh, will go clockwise, thus increasing your indication. So when the diaphragm is expanding, it's actually telling you that you're flying faster. And how does the diaphragm expand? It's because if you increase the speed, you're gonna have more air coming in here, in here with more pressure. What will happen is the air goes here, comes here, then going to the diaphragm, thus the diaphragm will expand and thus the uh, airspeed indicator will increase, telling you that you are increasing your speed, okay? So I hope this is, uh, this is clear, how does it work? So it's really about a chamber and a diaphragm that expands or contracts depending on your pressure, okay? The next concept is clear to understand in order to understand in full the airspeed indicator, okay? So what we've got here, as you can see, we've got a chamber and a diaphragm, okay? In here, you've got a pressure, okay? So what will happen is that this pressure has to work closely with the diaphragm pressure, okay? Because let's say on the chamber you've got the mean sea level pressure, so you have an high pressure, okay, inside the chamber. What will happen once you increase your altitude, you start climbing, climbing, so what will happen is that the density of the air will decrease. Thus, even though you accelerate, because of the air density, you're gonna have less air, less pressure, and less density coming into the pitot tube. Thus, this very uh, weak air, uh, airflow that goes into the diaphragm will make the diaphragm very difficult to expand because the pressure that is in, that is in the chamber is very high since it was the pressure that was at mean sea level and once you fly at high altitude, okay, the pressure that goes inside the pitot tube because of the high altitude is very weak, okay, is uh, the density the pressure is low, so the air that goes inside the diaphragm is very a low pressure, low density, so if in the chamber you've got the mean sea level pressure, it will be super difficult to the di for the diaphragm to expand because you're gonna have a lot of pressure in the chamber and very low pressure and density into the diaphragm. Thus, if you fly at a high altitude and you don't, and you have the mean sea level in, into the chamber, you rarely see an airspeed indication increment, okay, because the diaphragm will not be able to, to expand. So then is when the static ports come into play, okay? The static, what the static ports actually does will equalize the outside air pressure. So it will make sure that the pressure in the chamber, okay, will always be the correct one to make sure that diaphragm will actually work, okay? Because let's say the example that we made before, you've got the pressure at the mean sea level and the pressure that is in, going inside here because you're flying at the mean sea level is actually high. But once you climb, this air pressure going to the pitot tube is low because the density of the air uh, with increase with the with the altitude will decrease. So what will happen is that even the pressure in the chamber has to be low, okay, it has to decrease because if you want the diaphragm to work perfectly, okay, that's why the static ports will actually make sure that the the pressure into the chamber is correct, and the diaphragm, of course, will have the correct pressure because it takes it from the pitot tube, okay. This is extremely important to understand because you cannot have different pressures, okay? Pressures that are references because if you take in the chamber the pressure, the mean sea level, and you're actually having the air inside the diaphragm at high altitude, the diaphragm will not expand. And the true is uh, the opposite. Also, is also true if you have got a high altitude pressure, so a low pressure in the chamber and high pressure into the diaphragm. The diaphragm will expand very quickly, thus making your uh, indicated airspeed completely wrong. So what you want is a good relationship between the chamber and the diaphragm, and this is critical to understand. Okay, once you get this concept, you will be able to understand how does the chamber, the diaphragm, the airspeed indicator works all together. Okay, so now that this concept is clear, let's move on and let's see what can go wrong with the airspeed indicator.
As a professional pilot, I do every six months a simulator. Okay? In the simulator, we practice a lot of non-normal scenarios, engine failures, and much many more scenarios in order to make sure that if something happens in real life, we are actually ready to deal with that. Okay? A, very, a very common scenario is an airspeed indicator uh, malfunction. What will happen is that we actually take off and then suddenly we don't have the airspeed indicator or we're going to have the wrong indication. Okay? And then we need to know how to fly the plane without having the airspeed indicator. It's actually quite uh, uh, doable okay, if you know what you're doing, but let's go into the practical things and see what happened. As we said before, we've got a pitot tube and a static port. Okay? These ones, they have a hole that takes the pressure, okay? One takes the dynamic pressure and the other one takes the static pressure. But what happens if one of these two ports get blocked, okay? The common uh, problem is the ice. For example, in the pitot tube, you've got some ice accretion because there is a low temperature, you've got some humidity, so the ice starts to build up around the pitot tube, and then basically the ice will actually cover the small hole that takes the pressure, and then you're gonna lose the dynamic pressure. Okay, this is a common scenario. Okay, that's why on board of the of the aircraft you've got the pitot uh, eaters. Okay, so you switch on the pitot eaters, pitot eat, and then this pitot will be actually will be warmed up in order not to make the ice to uh, build up around the pitot tube. Okay, and let's look what happens if you, your pitot tube gets fully blocked. Okay, your pitot tube is 100% blocked, so you don't have any dynamic pressure information. If you go back at the, at the discussion that we made before about the pressure of the chamber and the pressure of the diaphragm, we can really know what will happen, okay? Let's say your pitot tube is blocked, so your dynamic pressure doesn't work anymore. So what you've got in here is basically a diaphragm that will not expand nor contract if you're flying at level flight, okay? But what will happen if you descend, okay? Let's say the pressure here is constant, so let's say you, you were flying at very high level, so you have a very low pressure here, okay? The pressure inside the diaphragm is low because you were flying at cruise altitude, okay? So the pressure in the chamber is low, and the pressure in diaphragm is also low, okay? Because you're now cruising, cruising okay? You're not climbing or descending. But let's see what happens if you descend. So once you start descending, okay, since your pitot tube doesn't get the dynamic pressure anymore, but your static port will still work, what we we'll have, we'll, you will have descending, the pressure will increase. Thus, the pressure inside the chamber will increase. And what will happen to the diaphragm? Since the pressure inside the chamber will actually increase, your diaphragm will contract because the pressure here is actually, in, is actually increasing and thus the diaphragm will actually contract, okay? So what will happen when the diaphragm will actually contract is that you will have a speed indication that is gonna go back. You're gonna see that your air speed will actually start to decreasing, okay? And let's talk about the opposite side. Let's say you're cruising at very uh, low altitude, okay? So then suddenly you have a pitot, to block, okay, so you don't have the dynamic pressure anymore, so the pressure inside the diaphragm is high and the pressure on the chamber is high because you were flying at low altitude, and let's say you start to climb, okay, climbing the pressure decreases, so what will happen is that since the pressure inside the diaphragm is constant, but the chamber pressure will decrease because your static port will still work, what will happen is that your diaphragm will start to expand, okay? Because you have the mean sea level pressure in here, for example, and in here you've got the pressure at high altitude now. So what you will see is that suddenly, since expanding will make your speed to increase, your uh, indicated air speed to increase, you will see that your air speed indication will start to increase, okay? And now let me ask you a question, okay? Which instruments actually increase with the increase in, in, uh, in altitude or decrease your uh, indication with the decrease in altitude? This instrument is the altimeter. Okay, so you can say that if you have a full blocked pit toe, the airspeed indicator will actually work like an altimeter. Okay, so because as we talked about chamber and, dia and diaphragm pressure, they will work in this way. And so you, you will see that if you have a full pit blockage and you start to descend, the airspeed will start to decrease and vice versa if you start to climb because the chamber pressure will change, okay? 
Most of the plane, especially the airline jets, okay, they have multiple speed tot and static ports, okay, because you might get one speed tot uh, blocked, but you may have another one as a backup, okay. Normally, you've got one for the captain and one for the first officer, okay. Some aircraft they have a standby as well for the standby uh, airspeed indicator, okay. So you've got some redundancies in there. So what it is important to understand is if you've got a total uh, failure of the airspeed, you can still fly the plane. It is not a big deal as long as you know uh, your pitch and power setting. So it is important to know that if you lose your high speed totally so you have completely blocked all of the pitot tubes and all the static ports everything goes out of the window if you put a pitch and you put a power you will make sure that you will not stall okay because you you you've seen the problem is that the tendency that you've got if you're flying then you see that your high speed suddenly start to decrease or increase or suddenly start to uh, do some strange movement, since you are so uh, used to f uh, trust your airspeed indicator, you will start to apply changes, okay? So let's let's say you're, you're cruising at 220 knots, and then suddenly you see your speed goes to 250, 60, 80, 90, 300. I can tell you that the tendency, and the first thing that you want to do is to close the thrust lever in order to keep the speed under control. But the problem there is that your speed is cost on 220 knots. The airspeed indicator indicator is, is giving you the wrong information. So if you close the thrust lever still trusting the airspeed indicator, what will happen is that you will stall, okay? So this is a big problem. So once you know that, uh, let's say, at 3 degrees of pitch and 60-70% of power, you are within a, an envelope that doesn't, uh, the, that you don't stall, basically, you, will, you are safe to fly, okay? So if you see that the airspeed indicator is, trying, is starting to do some crazy things, don't really trust the airspeed indicator. Make sure you've got the correct pitch and the correct power. I hope you liked the video, you took something out of it. If you liked the video, give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Go to my channel, watch all of the other videos and leave in the comment below your questions that you may have when watching the other videos, okay? Also go to paroclimb.com where you can subscribe for free paro training content. I wish you a great day and I'll see you in the next one.